the centre of my Ramsar project is made up of three distinct forest areas. The Murray, Colletch, Edward and Warquil systems all interconnect and have an impact on the red gum floodplains. We've had feral pests and weeds in our environment for many, many years now. Can't expect those numbers to turn around overnight. We tend to build projects that are built from the bottom up, where community involved, Aboriginal groups involved, we get more closely to what they want to see. But then, then we start bringing in government agencies and research agencies to do monitoring and assessments within, within the Ramsar sites. Murray Local Land Services Ramsar project has helped build the capacity for our people out on country because it's provided opportunity to work back out on country and access country and heal country. It's also built the capacity within our organisation so we can maintain long-term employment opportunities for our staff. Because we manage the land, we issue permits to local land services. We do the operational plans, so we do work closely with them and their third parties. We uh, formed a number of partnerships working with community and feral and pest animal control in the Ramsar wetland areas. Through those projects we work together with treating boxthorn and rabbits and foxes. They've progressed on to working with protection of native wildlife with turtle projects and those kinds of activities. Murray Local Land Services contracted me a few years ago to do a test of how effective 1080 poison baiting was for reducing fox numbers and whether that protected turtle nests and if we also saw an increase in juvenile turtles and then we're also doing turtle trapping to see how the population structures have changed uh, when that 1080 has been used. And we've been really heavily involved right through our country and not only Yorta Yorta country but also Brapa to the to the northwest and uh, Wamba country even further up northwest trying to revegetate and rejuvenate um, a lot of those cultural spots that our ancestors used to use particularly around the area of um, the Polak and I guess it's the standard for for what can be done. <laughs> We spend a lot of time um, convening the community, I suppose that's what a, a lot of land care groups do. We've been working with in environmental water delivery in the landscape with um, agencies and you know, we've got a, a valuable partnership with a range of those agencies on the ground. When we brought everyone in together, everyone has a different focus, whether it's a, a business focus or a personal focus, you know, they want to protect their own property or they want to protect their business or they want to protect the environment and so bringing all those ideas together. Um, and sitting around a table and talking about it. Finding that middle ground that sort of everyone is willing to sort of give a little for the greater benefit. The role we play is, is being a, a conduit between the community and government. Alright guys, you can put the turtles back in the water. Yeah. And we'll grab the abbeys and we'll put them back in the container. We've become involved in this uh, Ramsar related site to bring water back into some isolated ancestral creek beds. We decided that we'd get involved in this project to try and introduce some um, environmental water in to make it sort of a bit more of a permanent fixture on the farm. Birds like the bitterns can be breeding in the rice. They could also be breeding the polack, so there's actually a harbour here for them if they, uh, if they want to move further north. I was out the polack yesterday and just seeing all the natural grasses and the natural water lilies and water plants and that we've helped along over the years um, come in and re-veg but we were never able to get that real good hit of growth because of the, the inconsistencies with the water. Now we've got water in there most year round, it's just booming and all the native animals that are back in there, you know, the, the, um, the fish and the birds and the um, you know, just all little critters that call that place home. It's just an explosive area. For our rangers, we've sort of come back into a landscape that has been managed different to what we would have managed it, you know, in the traditional ways. We are having to learn a new way. So we can't do this without the other partners that Ramsar Project have provided us with. We're learning new skills to be able to work within a, a changing landscape. We've worked with all those key stakeholders and particularly the First Nations groups of our area in trying to not only uh, improve and maintain the condition of the forest areas, 
um, and achieve environmentally outcomes, but, but also try and provide opportunities for training and work and <laughs> capacity buildings within those Aboriginal groups and take a bigger role in the management of the paddock managed areas as well. The one common goal we all have is that health of the environment. And if Aboriginal people, it's a healthy country. To be able to work on country and spend time on country it goes to the local community as well. Having been a person that grew up in, in the Barma Miller Forest, you know, to me that's a part of what I want to do. I want to be out in the forest doing stuff. Yeah, we have a common goal to, to see that environment thrive and be healthy and sort of hope that that's there for our children uh, in the future.